Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our July 16th board meeting. Join us for the pledge, please. Ms. Neller. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Here. 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 Before we begin this afternoon, we have some folks that are wishing to make public comment outside. We would ask you kindly when you're done, if you're going to speak at the podium when you're finished, if we could have you please leave the room so we can bring the other people up uh, due to occupancy rules. Well, thank you for your cooperation. Deputy Clerk, we have two site plans this afternoon. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Supervisor and members of the town board. Mr. From the plan department, I have two uh, site plans for the board to consider, acting as the board of site plan review. Uh, the first one is called Pristine Properties uh, Mitsubishi. This is on the south side of Jericho Turnpike, east of Mayfair uh, Terrace in Comac. Uh, the proposal is for the construction of a 12,427 square foot first floor addition and 14,000 square foot second floor addition to an existing motor vehicle showroom uh, with a parking lot and um, expansion of uh, site work. Uh, the planning department is recommending approval uh, of the application with five conditions. Uh, the applicant has agreed to these five conditions. Uh, the first is that they obtain applicable permits from the building department. Uh, the second is that they put tree preservation fencing around areas to be preserved. The third um, is dealing with uh, the right of way and uh, the area between the sidewalk and curb to be grass. Uh, the fourth is with respect to the SWIP, that's the stormwater pollution prevention plan, um, that it be on site uh, during the duration of the construction. And uh, the fifth is with respect to lighting. Um, you might know this site uh, for a while had some issues with adjacent uh, residents to the south uh, due to land clearing. Uh, when I went to the Board of Zoning Appeals, uh, the Board of Zoning Appeals uh, required that the buffer be replenished. Uh, all the landscaping was done to the satisfaction of planning, engineering, and environment. And therefore, now we're here with the, uh, the site plan approval. Uh, this is uh, the site plan. At one time, it was uh, you might have known it as Comac Hardware. This is just to the west of uh, Alcamo Pools. Uh, this is uh, we have several uh, building renderings, so it'll look a, little, a lot more um, more modern and different from what's currently there. Does the board have any questions? None. No. Uh, applicant agreed to all conditions. He did. I believe the applicant is here as well. Um, Everything's good? <laughs> okay, very good. Um, Number two. Next application is called River Cap, New York. Uh, this involves the demolition of two um, 3,000 square foot buildings and an addition onto uh, a third building. If you see this building, it's roughly where uh, Maple Avenue meets Route 111, uh, opposite the uh, former IRS building on the east side of 111. There's uh, currently three office buildings there. Uh, two of the ones um, that straddle the north and the south property lines, those will be demolished, and it'll be one large building uh, at the east uh, portion of the property. Um, I believe they have a large medical tenant uh, going into this building. Uh, we're recommending approval with seven conditions, uh, that, and the applicant has agreed to those seven conditions. It's prior to the start of construction. They obtain applicable permits from the building department. They need to do a transfer of development rights for sanitary flow because they are going from office to medical office. Uh, the third is with respect to tree preservation fencing. Uh, the fourth, uh, that they obtain a permit from New York State DOT as Route 111 is a state roadway. Uh, number five is um, there's a, an existing town recharge basin directly to the north. It kind of has a dilapidated, uh, rusty old chain link fence. Uh, we were recommending that they work with the highway department uh, to uh, re, uh, replace that fence, uh, as this is going to be highly visible from their parking lot. Uh, the six on-site traffic flow, um, that it be made a one-way uh, one direction, 
and uh, that the last that the, some curbing modifications be made. This is the site plan. So you can see it's one large building uh, at the rear of the property. This did go to the Board of Zoning Appeals uh, to obtain variances, um, and they were approved. Uh, this is uh, the building. It'll be a two-story in the front, and I guess the with a full first floor. Um, any questions from that the board has? No. Question by the board? No. Okay, Ms. Tons, thank you. These site plans will be voted on at the conclusion of the agenda this afternoon. All right, thank you. That concludes our recommendations. Thank you, Peter. Good afternoon, Supervisor and members of the board. <coughs> the purpose of this public hearing is for the board to consider the adoption of a six-month moratorium on battery energy storage systems. <coughs> Recently, there has been a significant amount of public concern regarding the potentially volatile nature of lithium-ion batteries and the fear that this type of land use will pose a threat to the health, safety, and welfare of the public. In light of these concerns, the Smithtown Township Fire Chiefs Council requested a moratorium for the approval of any battery energy storage system in the town until further evaluation can be performed. Uh, this together with the need for additional information and assurance about the safety of these types of facilities, including ensuring that technology and availability of equipment necessary for local fire districts to be able to suppress a fire uh, should one occur, precautions related to gas emissions, and deterring any necessary fire suppression chemicals from impacting groundwater and the adequacy of location and other special permit standards for siting these facilities has led the board to consider the enactment of a six month moratorium for the review and permitting of battery energy storage systems while these issues are further considered and the law is adequately revised to address any outstanding concerns. So unless there are any questions from the board, that concludes my presentation. Questions by the board? No. no thank you, Is there guys. anyone in the audience wish to be heard in this public hearing? I'd say thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. I'll move to close the hearing. Second. Supervisor Wareheim? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Councilwoman Novak? Yes. Councilwoman Inzarello? Yes. Councilman Lowman? Yes. Authorize the town clerk to advertise for a public hearing to be held at town hall on Tuesday, August 13th at 2 o'clock to consider amendments to Chapter 108 of the Town Code entitled Boat Basin and Mooring Areas in regards to the term of the permit. Councilman Lohman? Yes. Councilwoman Inzarello? Yes. Councilwoman Nowick? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Wilhelm? Yes. Consent Agenda Controller number 1 to 17 and Resolutions 1 to 4 plus the minutes of 611. Does anyone on the Town Board wish to remove resolutions from the Consent Agenda? No. No. No, thank you. Councilman Lohman? Yes. Councilwoman Azzarello? Yes. Councilwoman Nowick? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Wilhelm? Yes. The town board to issue a CEQA negative de declaration determination in the application for site plan approval by Pristine Mitsubishi for Pristine Properties, located on Jericho Turnpike in Comac, and in the application for site plan approval by Anthony Capo for River Cap on the, on the east side of Hot Pog Road, both for reasons stated in a memorandum from the Department of Environment Director. Councilman Lohman? Yes. Councilwoman Isarello? Yes. Councilwoman Nowick? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? I'm going to abstain on one because I used to own multiple Mitsubishi stores, and yes on two. Supervisor Wilhelm? Yes. Authorize the town clerk to advertise for bid 2457, processing and recycling of yard waste, and 2455, steel stock. Councilman Lohman? Yes. Councilwoman Interello? Yes. Councilwoman Nowick? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Wilhelm? Yes. 
authorize the town clerk to advertise for a request for proposal for pavement management solutions. Councilman Lohman? Yes. Councilwoman Interolo? Yes. Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Wehan? Yes. Award the following bids and authorize the purchase of the associated goods or services. Bid 2444, agreement for refuge removal from properties deemed to be in violation of the town code to alpha carding and contracting services. 2449, annual requirement contract for traffic signal mass storms with foundations to Hink electrical contractor. 2447, highway work trucks with various options to trucks incorporated and to approve change order number one permitting the substitution of buyers, plow, and hitch on bid item number one, reducing the unit cost by $8,200. Furnish and install a truck scale at the Smithtown Highway Yard to advance scale company incorporated and GPS traffic signal preemption equipment to traffic systems. Councilman Lohman? Yes. Councilwoman Azzarello? Yes. Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Wilhelm? Yes. Town Board to approve the following. A termination of agreement with L.K. McLean Associates, effective upon town board approval and pursuant to an agreement dated October 14, 2021. The town board or appropriate official to enter into stipulation of settlement or agreement and consent to entry of an order with regard to various tax tertiary matters. An amendment to the 2024 Highway Road Program to add Arlene Place and Squire Lane in Kings Park. <coughs> Ratification of the supervisor's execution of recreation department agreements, providing various specialized services to Smithtown residents for the 2024 season. Accept a proposal from Hayduck Engineering related to professional services for engineering related plans for given park in accordance with an agreement dated May 23rd. A subscription with Civic Plus for legislative management products and services for a total cost of 16,870. An amendment to agreement with Newest Corp doing businesses bagel toastery to operate and maintain the fixed concession facilities located at Flynn Memorial Park, Short Beach and Long Beach. The animal shelter to purchase a Ford Transit van from Nielsen Forum of Morristown. A sole source purchase of a horizontal grinder power feed roller drive assembly from Roto Chopper. The next four resolutions are regarding extension of bids. 2269 for cast iron drainage items with American cast iron products and general foundries. 2254 maintenance and repair of physical systems with EnviroTrack and where ran LFG services. 2271 maintenance and repair of physical systems with Miller Environment Group at published 2024 time and material rates. Uh, 2263 processing and recycling of yard waste with Trinity Transportation Corporation. Authorize the Department of Environment and Waterways to submit an application with the Recyclable Partnership Coalition Grant Program for recycling equipment. An amendment to the 2024 agreement to spend town highway funds to add pavement solutions for town roads. The next two are regarding CSEA collective regarding bargaining agreements. The first is to modify the title of Traffic Technician 2 and Traffic Technician 3 and the second is modifying the title of the Senior Building Plans Examiner to Grade 17. Enroll in the Municipal Corporation New York Class Agreement. Ratification of the Supervisor's Execution of an Amendment to the Collective Bargaining Agreement with the Smithtown Administrators Guild regarding the position of Dis Director of Drug and Alcohol Counseling Services. And the last is an extension of bid 2349 for tree services with reliable tree service. Councilman Lohman? Yes. Councilwoman Zarello? Yes. Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Wilhelm? Yes. The Town Board to issue a written consistency determination pursuant to Chapter 151 of the Town Code that Coastal Consistency Review 2023-13 is consistent with the Local Water Revitalization Plan with conditions as stated in the July 2nd Memorandum from the Planning Director. Councilman Lohman? Yes. Councilwoman Azzarello? Yes. Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Wilhelm? Yes. Accepted donation from Catholic Health to Survivors Park, and accepted donation from Smithtown High School East Leadership Club to the Animal Shelter. Councilman Lohman? Yes. Councilwoman Azzarello? Yes. Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Wilhelm? Yes. 
authorize the supervisor to execute the following resolutions on a form approved by the town attorney. An agreement with Michael's PAC dog training to provide various programs for the animal shelter for a one-year term. An agreement with landscape structures to perform various projects under the terms and conditions of the Omni Partners contract and authorize the purchase and installation of safety surfacing at Callahan's Beach. A special event permit from New York State Liquor Authority, landlord authorization form on behalf of JYC Social for Nisconsin Day to be held on August 25th. Renewal of the electronic medical record maintenance and support in the amount of $11,000. Authorize the town board to apply for funding from New York State Office of Parks and Recreation and Historic Preservation for enhancements to Gibbon Park. Authorize for, for funding from New York State Department of State Local Water Revitalization Program for enhancements to Gibbon Park and adjoining recently acquired prop park property at 490 West Jericho Turnpike. An authorization for the town of Smithtown to join as a municipal member and fully participant in the New York State Waste to Energy Coalition and to designate the director of the Department of Environment and Waterways or his designee as the town's representative. An agreement between the town of Smithtown and American Medical Alert to provide emergency response units and related services for its senior citizen residents at no cost to the town for a one-year term. An agreement for the town to provide beach cleaning services to the beachfront property owned by ELBR Incorporated. Councilman Lowen. Yes. Councilwoman Interello. Yes. Councilwoman Nowick. Yes. Councilman McCarthy. Yes. Supervisor Wellhead. Yes. The town board to approve settlement in the following matters for the recommendation of the town attorney. Comac Public Library for 3378 David Herzog, $358.46, Allstate Insurance Company, $3,909.24, and Linda Brady, 216.64. Councilman Lohman? Yes. Councilwoman Anzarello? Yes. Councilwoman Nowick? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Wehan? Yes. And personnel per the agenda? Now I'll make a motion to withdraw number 15, resolution number 23448. Second. Councilman Lohman? Yes. Councilwoman Anzarello? Yes. Councilwoman Nowick? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Wehan? Yes. And you can call the roll, Mr. Clerk, on the remainder. The remaining being uh, number 1 to 14 and 16 to 28. Councilman Lohman? Yes. Councilwoman Anzarello? Yes. Councilwoman Nowick? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Wehan? Yes. That concludes our resolutions on the agenda. We have the two site plans to vote on. The minutes approval for the site plan meeting of June 11th and conditionally approved the site plan for pristine properties Mitsubishi. The location is the south side of Jericho Turnpike and Comat and conditionally approved the site plan for River Cap uh, on, the east, on the east side of Hop Hog Road in Hop Hog. Both of these resolutions were spoken previously at the beginning of the meeting by Peter Hans from our planning department. Councilman Lohman? Yes. Councilwoman Anzarello? Yes. Councilwoman Nowick? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Abstain on Mitsubishi 23-13 and yes on the rest. Supervisor Wehan? Yes. Okay, that concludes site plan. We will move to the public portion. Before we start, public participation is subject to the rules of the quorum, which you have on your speaker cards as per town code section 76.7. Public portion is for town-related matters only. Any unsubstantiated, unverified, or material false information will be interrupted. The three-minute rule will be strictly enforced. When you hear the tone, you have one minute to complete your comments. Thank you very much. Linda Henninger. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Linda Henning, I'm with Town Line Association. I'd like to read you something. If the town changes the zone to anything above light industry, we will be greatly affected in many ways. Our health, our safety, quality of life, and our, hop our property values will plummet. This is from an April 13, 2013 email to community members from Councilwoman Lisa Inzarello, who was then with the old Northport Lawrence Road Task Force. At the time, several Kings Park business owners had pending applications in front of the Smithtown Planning Board and the Board of Zoning Appeals for changes of zone 
or a certificate for existing uses. These businesses included Carlson Associates, FB4 Realty, and Anthony Letiri. These words from Councilwoman Inzarello were true then and are truer today, even more than when she wrote them. There is no doubt that a regional freight yard in our area will greatly and negatively affect families in so many ways. Our health, our safety, our quality of life, and our property values will plummet. There have been two community meetings where opposition to the Carlson Corp Town Line Rail Freight Yard was unanimous. There have been over 250 letters and petitions with well over 4,300 signatures in opposition sent to the Surface Transportation Board. On King's Park Day, we collected over 1,300 signatures in opposition, and a very recent online petition has over 1,000 signatures and is climbing every day. The community does not want this. It's not right for our community. It will harm our community. We're asking that the board retract, retract their support for the Carlson Corp Freight Yard and take action to stop this project. I want to thank you, and I just want, I have, these are all the letters of opposition and petitions. I have um, a, a bulk of each for, for you guys. I already gave it to Councilwoman Nowick and um, Councilman McCarthy, but I have three of these for the remaining council people. Thank you. Okay, you can uh, tend to those to the clerk. Okay. Heather Cirelli. Good afternoon, everyone, councilmen and women. Um, thank you for your time. I'm here about Bull Run Farms in St. James. It came back again. Okay, I have some talking points. The town's new comprehensive plan says that assisted living facilities should not be allowed in residential areas because of traffic and other impacts. The town board should be proactive and hold a public hearing to deny the application on the merits. We should not leave the application in the hands of court, federal court at this point. We need to protect the integrity of the comprehensive plan and character of the community. Due to the rural location along the Mills Pond Road historic corridor, this nine acre parcel should be preserved as open space and Suffolk County and the Peconic Land Trust want to purchase the property from the landowner. Um, I have lived in St. James for 27 years. Um, again, I don't know if, I, I think I left something out. My name is Heather Sorelli. I live at 11 Red Oak Road in St. James. I live right along Bull Run Farm. I actually bought my house because of that farm. It's beautiful. We want to leave it intact, please. Um, we're asking for your help. We're asking for a public hearing so we can put this thing to bed. It needs to go away. We don't want a 90,000 foot to, uh, facility, square foot facility. In fact, I noticed that the bowling alley is available. That would actually be perfect for what they're proposing. Let's repurpose a building that already exists. Let's not destroy a neighborhood, please. We're asking for your help. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your service. Thank you. Okay. George Houston. You guys have already spoken. You don't mind asking meetings with other people in. George Houston, Comac. Um, I would like a request uh, all of you to download an app on your phone. It's called IQ Air. IQ Air. On that, you'll you can put in the zip code of the towns that you want to look at. I do five towns for, for it. Um, you can hear me a little hoarse today. The air quality is not too good today here. Um, but back in early of 2024, 20, Kings Park was a 91. It was the number one worst town in New York State. 
Two other towns were in there for Huntington and another in Suffolk were in the top 10. The air quality today is pretty bad, 69 in Kings Park, 59 in Comac, East Northport, Northport, and Fort Salonga. Anything above a 50 to 100 is poor air quality. When the Canadian wildfires were affecting us, we were between 100 and 200. Being between two of the biggest polluting power plants in New York State and the Covanta plant, plus all the other industrial uses, also the Long Island Railroad, and the heavy traffic that adds to this number. Suffolk County is the worst air quality in New York State. Adding four freight trains a day could easily put us over 100 a day. I actually had to go to the doctor yesterday and get an inhaler because the air quality is so bad. I can't go out in my hot tub. I can't even go out in my yard and work in my garden. That's how bad the air quality is. Thank you very much. Thank you. Everybody can download it on your phone and take a look. Andrea Conti. Good afternoon to the board members. Um, my name is Andrea Conti. I just moved um, to this Midtown area from, from all the way out. Um, I'm here because um, I believe in following the laws and the rules. And I had called Town Hall on Friday about putting up a banner for our senior committee community. We want to have a bazaar. And I, I was told I had to speak to someone at the buildings department, and I did. I called to ask if we needed a permit and how long. And I asked him if we could put it up where everybody puts them up, across from the bull on 25. And he told me um, it's a violation that in the town of Smithtown, you're not allowed to put up a banner anywhere. So I'm just here to ask is if we can get permission, because he said who's ever been putting them up. We've seen them up for the Christmas craft and for other things, and he said they had to get permission from somebody. So I'm just here um, with the president of our tennis association to see if we can get permission, because we want to have a little fundraiser bazaar for our little community. Thank you. When is your, when is your fundraiser? It's, it's October. So, would, October 9th. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, November, November 9th. 9th. So, I would ask you to send an email to my office. Nicole is in the back. Send an email so that we can investigate and look into it. Um, you're correct about banners being up there, but that's controlled by the state of New York. It's a state highway. But let me look into it for you and I'll correspond with you. Thank you so much, sir. You're welcome. Michelle Monforti. and I live at Siena Village. That is the community that we're looking to get the banner to be placed up for. Uh, we have this every year, we have the uh, bazaar, but last year we had a little bit of a less uh, amount of people coming for it. This bazaar gives us the opportunity to give parties and other community events to get our seniors out and being, having a community affairs. Uh, we want to be able to do this for our community so that they don't tend to just stay at home. So we, we really just need to be able to put it up for a week. We wanted it from the um, October 26th to November 8th. That is the time frame that we would like to have our banner up and be able to bring in that, that extra uh, income from the people that will stop at the bazaar for us. Very good. That's basically just make sure that's in your email. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay, thank you. John Coravan. Glen Lane. John? Oh, sorry. Good afternoon, members of the board. My name is John Kennevin. I'm from 34 Glen Lane. A lot has happened in the last couple of weeks to further open our eyes related to politics today. The shooting of the President Trump has us all thinking, what if? The RNC convention also addressed many concerns that we all have regarding politics, regardless of your party. The head of the Teamsters was spot on and said so many things my late father, a longtime Teamster, also said. 
Big business and government do not care about the blue collar working man. Well, the proposed rail yard by the Carlson Corporation and the support of the government, including the town of Smithtown Board, is exactly that. Big business and its profits is being given priority over the Kings Park blue collar working homeowner. Trying to justify the need to move ash is only a smoke screen. Only a smokescreen for big business proposal of a major 161 car rail yard, which will do nothing to benefit the residents of Kings Park. Especially the families who live even closer than half the distance President Trump was from the shooter who tried to kill him. We need to elect town, we need our elected town representative to reconsider their approval of this project and to consider the neighbors affected by this proposal, big business project. A recent Newsday article reported that there are other options for this ash, including the proposed area in Brentwood, just a few miles south of the incinerator that we're discussing, and one-tenth of the current distance to the Brookhaven dump. This should be the option that the town board is supporting. And I don't know if any of you have looked at the aerial shots that they're proposing that in Brentwood. It's an industrial area. There is no housing, no public around that area. That's the place it should be. Thank you. Thank you. Cheryl Kennevin. Good afternoon, town, uh, members of the board. My name is Cheryl Kennevin. I reside at 34 Glen Lane Kings Park. I strongly oppose the building of a freight yard in our area. The proposed site is situated directly atop Long Island's major hydro, hy, hydrogeographic zone, a deep flow recharge area. The proposed project site is squarely in a Suffolk County Article 7 restricted area. A spill, leak, or any size breach of hazardous material at this zone one location will seep into the aquifer, their aquifer, their, thereby harming Long Island's drinking supply. It will degrade the groundwater quality within, within the all-important key deep flow recharge area affecting all Long Islanders. We have groundwater pollution problems. Why would we want to severely add to it? Please retract your support of the Carlson Corporation freight yard and take action to stop this project. Thank you. Thank you. Kathy Siaccio. Thank you. I've been a resident of Smithtown for about 44 years and just wanted to bring something to your attention about an incident that happened at Tona Park a few weeks ago. Where are you? Where? At Tona Park, okay. where someone I know was given a ticket for not being a resident. First off, there's a few reasons why I feel non-residents should use the park. There's no sign that says a non-resident can't use the park. There's a public library that's open to anybody that can use that. So if some, the library also does outings, which allows non-residents to participate. So if they come and park, are they going to be given tickets? There is a camp that Smithtown does for the children in the summer, whereas today a lot of grandparents have the opportunity to take care of their grandchildren. So if they come to bring their grandchildren to the camp, would they be given a ticket? Same thing with the sporting events. They have a lot of children's sporting events come to the fall. So does that mean grandparents or friends cannot attend to watch the children play in the park? Same thing with the water park. It's a large parking lot. I don't see where non-residents are taking spots from residents. Starting today for the next four weeks, they're having a the pickleball clinic, which brings in 64 new pickleball players. They do have four courts over there, which is getting very crowded. So now you're bringing in these people for the clinic are they going to get a ticket? When they come back to play after the clinic is over, will they be given a ticket? On the issue with the pickleball, since there's so many new players coming, there is a tennis court there. I play, I'd say, an average of 20 hours a week over there. And I rarely, rarely ever see anybody playing tennis. So I asked, too, if they would consider taking that tennis court and converting that into four more pickleball courts to allow for the extra people that are coming to the park. One, you have one minute. You have one minute remaining. Oh, 
I think I've covered everything. Okay. 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 Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Rob Weston. Hi, my name is uh, Rob Rostrin. I reside at 21 Great Oak Road in St. James. Uh, I've been a St. James resident for 12 years and grew up in Smith Town as well. Um, so I'm here, as, as, as many are, with, regarding the status of uh, Bull Run. On it, you know, we made our position clear, so clear that in that it, it really isn't in character with the uh, assisted living facility in the middle of the rural community, just not in the character of the community, uh, requesting a public hearing um, on it. And just also clarifying, it, from a precedent standpoint, the town board sets a precedent where a developer can come in and buy real estate at residential prices and then build a much larger living facility or anything that's a high occupancy. In it. I mean, that, that's a great, I'm a private equity person, that's a great business model to come in and just the, the gap you get between what residential real estate and what commercial is. You'll be setting a precedent if you don't hold this public hearing where somebody can just come in and buy residential real estate, convert it. In it, so in any developer will have that in mindset. So just asking for that public uh, facility as well. Also, would ask that we heavily look at um, just if, if for, I know I understand this is a litigation um, within the, in the federal court. If the town is fighting the position, just some kind of executive summary. We understand your legal counsel can't get into specifics in the court on what's going on, but just kind of some summary of the town, the position the town's taking, where it is in the federal court what's been filed and just kind of some, talk, some points on the town board would be helpful, I think, for the community. I think we'll address a lot of the concerns members of the community have, just kind of some level of transparency within that. Again, I, I want to be clear. I am not opposed to assisted living facilities. Uh, I'm in a position now where my parents may need one at some point. Uh, and just, it's just putting it in the right area in the community, in an area where, that makes sense uh, for the community. So I'll yield the rest of my time, and I appreciate the instruction. Thank you very much. Thank you. Stephen Oaks. <laughs> Stephen Oaks, 22 Great Oak Road. I've lived there 32 years. I'm also here because of Bull Run Farm and concerns. Uh, I'd like to applaud the town because of uh, coming up with a comprehensive plan and eliminating the special exception. Uh, but we're very concerned about assisted living facility that could be approved even though it doesn't meet the requirements for approval. Um, the uncertainty of having the issue decided by the Planning Board and the Planning Commission is a problem. Um, and it's a problem that we have to deal with. Uh, so we're concerned about the assisted living facility in a residential area because not meet the requirements for approval when the application was originally applied. Um, the Town Board should be proactive and in our opinion, hold a public hearing to deny the application on the merits. Um, an assisted living facility in this location will reduce the value of our homes and create a traffic nightmare and exacerbate the flooding <coughs> issues at 25A. Uh, due to location and historic elements, Bull Run Farm is, in our opinion, an ideal property for preservation both Suffolk County and the Connick Land Trust are very interested in making that happen. Um, and I'd like to show a hand for people that are supporting that. Uh, my neighbors are here. And I yield my time. Thank you, sir. Mike Sasson. Forgive me. So you got it. Um, you know, I live right next door to Bull Run Farm. Um, oh, we got some talking points. The talking points. You know, um, you guys denied it already. There's a loophole they're trying to get through, manipulate this thing through, which is, you know, you know, I think what gets me the most is just the lack of moral fiber and the greed that this builder is uh, presenting to us. And to allow this is crazy. You know, you made a decision on it already. You did what's best for the community. Uh, I just don't know why we need to fight this anymore with this guy. Um, 
It is about preservation. You look all over the island, everywhere it's being built. We got nothing. St. James has nothing left. You know, I've been in St. James over 30 years. I grew up in Smithtown. I was five years old when we moved to Smithtown. I'm 62. Been here all my life and just watched all the changes. You know, but there's not an ounce of land left. You know, we're, uh, I love fishing in the back bay. That's getting destroyed. You know, and uh, it's just, it's just if we can just keep something. <laughs> you know, just keep something. Thanks for letting me share. There goes my seat. Sit <laughs> down. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Jennifer, Jennifer Van Dien, Denise. be a contortionist to get up here if you're in the back row. <laughs> my name is Jennifer Van Dyntz. I live at 8 Sunken Meadow Road in Fort Salonga. Um, my parents moved into the house. It's one of the historic homes in Fort Salonga more than 71 years ago. So my family has been a resident in Fort Salonga for a very long time. Um, in that time, we've seen many changes, some good, some bad. But I don't think there's anything that has had the impact that that rail yard would have on our community. For all of the reasons already stated about the aquifers and you know the valuing of, devaluing of property, um, I don't need to say that again. It's been said better than I'm saying it now. But I have a question to ask everybody here. Just over a year ago, something happened in East Palestine, Ohio. Did we learn nothing from that? I think if we ask the residents there what the impact has had on their community, I think it's beyond anything that we can even imagine. So I just ask you to please reconsider approving that. Thank you. Thank you. Wendy Haberman. Hi, good afternoon. I'm Wendy Haberman. I am a Smithtown resident. I reside at 55 Peppermint Road in Comac. And I just want to piggyback on what the person said before me. Um, I just went through and saw all of these train derailments. I don't know, I'm sure you guys follow. I mean, a train yard is coming to your town. You are going to have no involvement, once the federal government takes over, you are not going to be able to monitor what is being transported on those tracks. June 13th, freight train cars derail in Gregory on Monday, spurring road closures and evacuations. Uh, sorry. Also on June 13th, video shows nearly two dozen train cars off the track after derailment in southeastern Nebraska. June 29th, evacuations ordered after Madison freight train derailment. And then of course the one in Ohio that the person before me spoke about. It's just a bad, bad situation. There's too many families nearby. There's too many schools. I can't imagine that you would want to put your residents in risk like this. So I'm begging you, please, withdraw your support of this terrible project. Thank you. Mike Messino. Hi, my name is Mike Messino. Uh, I live at 5 Glen Road in Kings Park. Um, I am one of those people that are right in the backyard. I was here last time, um, and I spoke about my young kids and all the kids in the neighborhood. I have a household, you know, 10 and 11 year olds at my house every day this summer. Um, you know, I hear a lot of people talking about the derailment. Yeah, that train's going to wind up in my backyard when it derails. Um, there's been, you know, a lot of talk about distance recently as of like this weekend. I'm closer than that to this where you guys are proposing to put this rail yard. Very, very close by, less than 150 yards. Um, you know, my neighborhood is filled with kids, not just my own. I'm not just talking about my own children. 
Um, in my neighborhood, I want to say there's 46 kids, and I, by children, I mean like, you know, teenagers or, or, or younger. Um, I don't understand how the, everybody could be in support of something that is literally put in our backyards. Um, air quality control. Um, Kings Park, uh, Smithtown, I'm sorry, the air quality in this area today, we were just talking about it downstairs, is 10 points worse than the surrounding areas already. Just had that conversation five minutes ago downstairs. Um, what's going to happen to the air quality once we have a freight train yard in our backyard where there's already worse air quality here than in like our neighboring area? Um, I just, you know, I just came here to make sure I voiced my uh, proposal to this and just trying to understand how there's support. I see lots of signs everywhere. Stop the freight yard, stop the freight yard, stop the freight yard. I haven't seen a single sign that says welcome the freight yard. <laughs> like, not one. Uh, so I'm not really sure where the support's coming from when the community seems to, to overwhelmingly not support this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I don't have any more speaker cards unless there's anybody. Is there anybody feeling yeah, one out? Is there anyone outside? Is there anyone outside? Yeah, yeah, there's two people outside. There's anybody who doesn't mind. Um, how many people are outside? There's only two. Millie Marchese. Hello, my name is Millie Marchese. I live at 36 Brewster Avenue in Northport on the Port Salonga side. Um, I'm here to ask for your reconsideration for uh, the freight yard that's going to be built. Uh, it's a concern not only for me, for the whole entire community. I brought my family here 27 years ago. We lived in Comac and presently in Northport. And, um, we moved here for all of the wonderful reasons why you moved to this neighborhood. Smithtown is a community where we want to be, and mm -hmm. I will share with you that learning that the freight was going to be built, we considered moving, and that's a horrible feeling to feel like we're going to leave because this is where our roots were. Um, it's not a comfortable place for us to think that we're going to be living next to a freight yard. Uh, we already have other concerns of the community, you know, with the garbage and things like that. The freight yard is the one thing that's probably going to take us over the top. I pay a lot of taxes. I pay over $30,000 a year in house taxes. And I feel that we deserve better than that. So I'm here to ask for your reconsideration and uh, to do the best thing for our community, for us, and for our children. And it's very important. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Diane Calderon. Hello, I'm Diane Calderon. I live at 269 Bread and Cheese Hollow Road in Fort Salonga. I've, thank you for the opportunity to be here again today. I've spoken at the board meetings a couple of times. Um, as I've expressed in the past, right, I've been, I moved here from the South Shore, um, living here for 17 years. I moved into a historic house that was built in 1890. I love this house. We've been rebuilding it, uh, remodeling inside, right? And when I heard the story of this, you know, the freight yard potentially coming, really gave me pause on do I want to invest anymore in my house, 
right? Because maybe we, this is the time to get out of here before this thing really settles in and we're gonna have a hard time selling at some point. But if it wasn't for the freight yard, right? Where we live right now is beautiful. I have two children. They're here with me today. They're actually out exploring town of Smithtown, getting some lunch so that I could be here, because this is so important to me, my family, and I think to the community, to be here to support this and express my feelings on this. That, you know, someday I hope that my children will go away to college and they'll come home. This is our home, right? They'll come back here to our house that we built, they grew up in, they were born in. And I would hate to see like something like this be the reason that's going to give us the decision to, to leave um, this area. So, I mean, this is, I'm just ex expressing like how important this is, I think to myself and plenty others in the room here. Um, I'm getting emotional talking about it. I'm tired of fighting, you know, for this. Um, it's my birthday, believe it or not. And I, <laughs> I thank you. I say I, I'm a very private person, believe it or not. I didn't even tell my, my closest friends here that I've made through Taiwan Association in fighting for this all, you know, for well over a year. I, I purposely took off work today, not only because it was my birthday, because I knew this meeting was going to happen. And I knew I had to reserve time to be here and speak my piece. And this is how I'm choosing to spend my birthday. I could have been at the beach today, you know, lovely day of my children. That's just how important this is that I think this is so detri detrimental, you know, to my family and to all the people I care about and people I, I don't even know in the community that I care for. Thank you very much. Thank you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> Supervisor, I don't have any more cards. Jen? Nobody? Okay, thank you, everyone. Uh, just one comment on uh, Bull Run Farm. If there's anyone here that wishes to speak to the town attorney, myself and the town council cannot comment on this because we are in litigation. Town attorney will be here if you have any questions. He'll be able to answer to the best of his ability. Okay, thank you very much for attending. I move to close this meeting. Thank you. Supervisor Whalen? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Councilwoman Nowick? Yes. Councilwoman Inzarello? Yes. Councilman Loman. Yes. Okay, have a good day, everyone.